Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome, welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest is the last living link to the greatest revival to ever hit America. And he says that a greater revival is about ready to come. Now, let me tell you what happened at the Azusa Street revival. He tells stories about people missing limbs and not, not just one leg a half an inch shorter than the other and growing out. Missing legs, yes. missing arms, yes. and the arms just shoot right out. And he says he has an anointing that he wants to transfer to whosoever is hungry. Is that you? Is there a supernatural dimension, a world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. In 1906, one of the greatest revivals the world has ever known hit America. It was called the Azusa Street Revival. And there was a young man, and he was in trouble. He was an alcoholic. He, uh, he, he, had, he was a drug addict. Uh, he, he was homeless. And some women from the Azusa Street Revival felt sorry for him, led him to the Lord, set him free, and these were elderly people that actually were part of the Azusa Street Revival. And they told Tommy, I, your job is to tell the next generation where the greatest move of God's Spirit to ever hit planet Earth just before Jesus comes to tell these stories. Uh, Tommy, why did they want you to tell these stories? because they believed they were anointed and it was going to set forth the revival. Uh, and when I tell these stories now, Sid, things start happening. People start getting healed and people start getting ministries themselves supernaturally, especially when I pray a prayer of importation on them. Well, I'm going to have Tommy do that in a little while. But Tommy, tell me about William Seymour who started the revival. Seymour is the son of a slave. He wasn't that awful educated, but listen, they said that when the anointing come on him, he started preaching. Man, he'd say words so everybody could understand it, but they were so intelligent. Had an anointing on him all the time, and he was obedient. I don't know that if a pastor could get away with this today, but he had sat on a, a pew and put a box on his head. What kind of box? A wooden box. Why, a, why'd he do that? Well, he said God told him to. And sometimes he'd sit there for 10 minutes, and they said he'd sit there before for over an hour. While all the people were there, he said, how would you like to be, have a wooden box over your head, and you sit there praying in a supernatural language for an hour while the congregation is just sitting there? Now, when he'd take the box off, what would happen? Well, he'd always get up, and then everybody would sit down and start listening. And a lot of times he'd start just walk around, finally he'd tell, he'd say, Charles, Charles. he's talking to Brother Signs, play, play this tune. And when Charles Signs would start playing the tune, he said he wouldn't be long. And he said, Brother Tommy, I'd just sit back and watch my fingers play. And the people in the audience says it sounded like a thousand pianos playing. Hmm. And he said he's sitting and looking at the people finally and say, now start singing in tongues. And when this starts, what well, he say in the spirit, but that meant tongues. When they start singing in tongues, 
that Shekinah glory that lingered on the floor would start rising and it would fill the whole building. And then a flame would shoot up out of the roof, a big flame. Had the fire department call many times. <laughs> it was real. <laughs> yeah. All right, it would shoot out of the roof, and but you told me another flame, uh, a bolt of lightning almost would come from heaven. Explain that. Well, it would shoot up about 50 feet, they said. And then about 50 feet from that, a ball of fire would appear. And flames would start shooting down and go through the flames that were coming up. What were these flames? What was the point of this? Well, I know uh, I had a Jewish rabbi explain to me that there are flaming angels mingling through each other in the Bible. This is, this is known. He said those angels, that the flames that were shooting down were angels bringing miracles to Azusa Street and the ones going up were going back to get more miracles. And that's during that time of the flames is when the great Amer miracles would happen. The, the now, now, they had wonderful, creative miracles. It's going to be hard for you to believe. T tell me about the man that had an artificial arm. He had had his, even his shoulder blade here ripped out at a job. And back then, they didn't have the benefits they had now. He had an artificial arm hanging on it, but it was starting to really give him some trouble. And Seymour said, well, y'all need to take the artificial arm off. And he looked at the audience and said, y'all want to have some fun like we did about a year ago when the man's leg grew out? He said, well, we're going to. And he laid his hands on his shoulder. Brother Garcia looked down and said, Brother Tommy, I could look down into that hole in his shoulder and see the bone. He said he started praying for it and said all of a sudden the bone started growing out. In about four inches, the flesh started growing around it. And he said, I sat there, it took only seconds for him it was slow motion, and he washed it as it just grew out. And he says, then he washed his, the fingernails appeared all of a sudden. You know, you know, if that would happen for me, I'd put a wooden box on your head, on my head. <laughs> would you do it? I know you would. We'll be right back. I can't wait for him to pray for this impartation for you. Yes. Yes. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. What if today you could actually receive the same anointing that was upon William Seymour, the great revival pioneer and father of the Azusa Street Movement? Call now and get Tommy Welchel's anointed book, Stories of the Miracles of Azusa Street and Beyond, and his powerful two-part audio CD set, Miracle Impartations. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9207. Tommy Welchel is known as the final link to the Azusa Street Revival. He lived among the youth of that great spiritual outpouring and recorded first-hand accounts of the miracles these children of Azusa Street have witnessed. People report that they have received supernatural healing as they read the many powerful supernatural testimonies of Azusa Street. Testify of receiving supernatural faith to believe God for the impossible. Share that they are beginning to release the anointing they have received to others. Through Tommy's powerful two-part audio CD set, you will receive an impartation of the same anointing Tommy Welchel received as the children of the Azusa Street Revival imparted to him. Don't miss out on getting Tommy Welchel's anointed book, Stories of the Miracles of Azusa Street and Beyond, and his powerful two-part audio CD set, Miracle Impartations. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9207. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9207 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. This is so amazing. Three of the generals that had been at the Azusa Street Revival, that were part of the revival that was spreading throughout the United States, that just didn't even know each other was prophesying this, all prophesied the same thing about a great revival that was coming. What was the prophecy? That in about a hundred years, there would be a revival like Azusa Street, only greater, that would return and greater, greater miracles, and it wouldn't be in one place with one person, it would be all over the world. 
said, regular people, regular church members, even children, older people, even people in nursing homes would start having healing ministries there. Mm. And it would last until the second coming of the Lord. How far off is that revival in your opinion? I believe it's starting now. I've seen I it. I do places. too. I've seen some creative miracles. Shawnee, Oklahoma, you should have seen some miracles I saw. Tell me one. Okay, one, a young man, 17 years old. It looked like a nest had been carved in his back. He, he came up, this, this, this young minister, when he heard my stories, people started getting healed. The young man didn't, he didn't touch the young man, but the young man didn't, he fell out of the spirit, but he didn't go forward or backward. He fell sideways. When he got up, his back was perfectly straight. But, you know, that is a miracle. But what I want you to hear is uh, this, this is almost hard to believe. Tell me about the person whose face supernaturally became normal, no plastic surgery, supernaturally. You, you mean like the elephant man? Yes. Well, th this man, his chin dropped down to about here. How he ate, I don't know. And, and even those people at Azusa told me they didn't know. But they started praying for him, and then you could hear bones popping, and, and his chin started coming back up. And with just in a few minutes, he was normal. And, and, and Lucille said he was really kind of attractive. Well, speaking of attractive, even a movie star that had a horrible accident, yes. Robert Montgomery. Tell me, what, what happened to him as a child? Most well, people don't know this. He, he had had a, had fallen and his head had hit on concrete and it had busted his head. They said, you could see skull and you could even see some brain matter coming out. Hmm. Well, mama didn't run him to the hospital. She ran down to Azusa Street and took him in there, and they started praying for the kid. And things started coming back in, and it went together. And when he grew up, he was one of Hollywood's golden boys, Robert Montgomery. Listen to this. Many of these saints had like specialties, just like in the natural. A medical doctor uh, might be a specialist for heart, a specialist for skin. Well, those that have gifts of the Spirit have different specialties. That's true. Tell me about the woman that had a specialty for teeth. That's Lucille. Now, now Lucille was only four foot ten, but she would tell me, she says, Tommy, I, I even played games with it. She says, she would get people with no teeth. She wouldn't pray for all the teeth to come back in. She prayed for one at a time. She wanted to put her finger down on the tooth, push down, pray for God to grow it back and have the tooth push her finger up. It should go around the mouth, bottom and top. It takes some time, but she had fun doing it. There were, there were young people that would be just playing in the glory. <laughs> Explain that. Well, that was uh, Ralph Riggs and uh, C.W. Ward. Now, not C.M. Ward, C.W. Okay. That, when, when that glory would get so thick. Ralph told me you, sometimes you couldn't see more than 10 foot from you. He said him and Ralph would, would play hide and go seek until their parents, their mothers found out, caught them and then put a stop to it. Tell me about Goldie who had a specialty for growths. Goldie, Goldie that's the one that, 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 that led me to the Lord at Venice and brought me to Pisgah. She even would take a little dustpan and put it in a towel and throw it away. People with growths going out all over them. She, she just loved praying for them. She said she'd stand there and watch them and they're just falling off. And some of them, you could hear the little clicks as they hit the ground. And she would get them and sweep them. She didn't want them laying around there, you know, rotting and getting bad. She'd clean them up and put them in a towel and go them and throw them in the trash. And how, how about the, uh, the woman who had her ear off? She, she had caught her husband with another woman, and the other woman and the wife got into a fight, and the other woman bit the wife's ear off. She had come to Azusa Street. Somebody. Sister Carney saw her come in with a, a bloody bandage over her ear, and she said you could see she was in tremendous pain. So she went up to her and said, 
to minister to her, and she told her what had happened. She said she pulled it back, said, Tommy, it looked like a raw piece of meat. There was nothing there, just a raw piece of meat. Well, she started praying for it, and the woman said, oh, oh, I feel tingling, and the pain's all gone. The pain is gone. So she said she yanked it back and looked, and right before her eyes, that was her first creative miracle. She said, the ear, a brand new ear. Now, for those that don't know, Pisca was the place where, like the retirement place, where all the elderly saints were, where Tommy heard these stories and received these, this amazing impartation from all of these people that had these miracle ministries. I'm going to ask him to pray for you when we come back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! If you love watching our It's Supernatural! TV program, you can now watch hundreds of archive programs online, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, on your computer, your smartphone, your iPad, or your favorite tablet. In addition to archive programs, you'll be able to also watch special ministry and mentoring sessions taped at our It's Supernatural! Media and Mentoring Center in Charlotte, North Carolina, with the best teachers in the various gifts of the Holy Spirit. You will also be able to enter into the presence of God through anointing worship and special soaking prayer sessions. Just log on to SidRoth.org forward slash ISN. ISN will be the vehicle to equip you to being normal. Normal as defined by the Bible. You will be taught and receive impartation to walk in the supernatural of God like never before. That's SidRoth.org forward slash ISN. We now return to It's Supernatural! Hello, right, Sid Roth here with Tommy Welsh. Uh, you've seen people on television where they've been prayed for and they've been overcome by the presence of God. What would happen if this happened miles away because the power of God was so strong? You can't say the, the evangelist pushed them down. Tommy, what would happen at Azusa Street? Uh, how far away was the train station? Six blocks. Six blocks. What would happen at the train station from the glory that was at Azusa Street? People were coming to Azusa Street. They, they, they were riding the train and it was, they'd get off and start walking on the platform and falling out, speaking in tongues, and some, some of the innocent workers were close to them. It would happen to them too. And David Garcia came by and saw it. He thought a disaster had happened. And he'd go up and examine them and he'd realize that there's, they're just speaking in tongues. <laughs> Let those disasters happen. Speaking of David Garcia, tell me about the time he prayed for the man with the hole in the stomach. That was something else. He said he had a big handkerchief hanging down over his stomach and it didn't smell too good. Well, he came up and asked the man, he says, what is your problem? He said, well, he told him, he said he picked up the izzard and looked under it. He says, his entrails just hung out, hung down on his side. And he said, so he put the, 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 the flap back down and put his hand on it and started praying and he could feel his hand going in. And all of a sudden he says, there was no one, so he just grabbed it and put it back up. There wasn't even a hole. It just closed up it right closed in front up. of him. His, his entrails went back into his stomach and it closed up. And, and you know, one of the things that impressed me, Tommy, a lot of the people that God were using were young people, 17 year olds, 18 year olds, 11 year olds. Uh, tell me about someone 11 years old. Ralph Riggs. Ralph said one of his biggest miracles, and, and he, 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 an old drunk had come in off the street. Stunk of alcohol. A very giant of a man, about six foot four, maybe 250 pounds. Ralph didn't like it, but then all of a sudden he got closer and realized the man was blind. Stone blind. So he had more compassion. One of them says, What did you come here for? He says, Well, the people are telling me people, it's just people come in here and, and they get healed. He said, I want to be, I want my eyes healed. He said, okay, let's pray. Let's pray. He prayed for the man. His eyes got healed. Even the stench of alcohol left. And later on, through the Midwest, he had great revivals with the Assemblies of God, even my hometown. 
and established a church there. And, and you know what's so wonderful? Not only did Tommy hear these miracle stories, but these elderly people retained their anointing. Yes. So uh, you actually saw miracles actually before your very eyes. Tell me one. But there was a there was a, a couple that was brought from England. The child was a grayish color. He had some kind of blood disease. He wasn't supposed to be alive. Well, they brought him there, and of course, they came up and says, "We want to see Sister Dundee." I said, "Oh yeah, I'll go get her." And I, I got all excited, so I ran and I found Sister Dundee and literally dragging her over there. And I said, they got their sixth child. I said, give them the child. She took the child and didn't raise it. She just prayed for it and she stood there. Um, finally, she just handed it back and said, okay, the child is healed. <laughs> Gave it back to him. She turned and walked on back, went into the church. And I'm standing there upset. I said, I want to see the baby. The woman raised the baby, and oh, she about dropped it. It looked normal. Yeah. And it was just laughing and going on. So I played with it, and, it, and we had a good time. Uh, you know what I think is so wonderful? Tommy, sometimes when he prays for people, he then prays for the impartation, and others pray. Tell me about in Banning, California, the 13-year-old girl. The little girl. I really love it, this, this story because, see, it's revival that broke loose after I left. Her, her, her pastor, youth pastor, had hurt his leg in a football game and he had it in a cast. Well, when I was speaking, I had him come down and sit in a certain area and I said, now you people up there, you pray. And I said, I mean you young people as well as these older ones. You pray, and if God tells you to go, leads you to go pray for somebody, obey, go down and pray for them. Well, this little girl got up, and she looked about 10, but she was 13. She walked down there and laid hands on this man, and all of a sudden he started jerking, and he would yell, get the cast off. They busted this cast off, and he started dancing around the church. It took me a while to get him to get that little girl over to me. Everybody was going crazy. And I said, sweetheart, how old are you? She said, 13. I said, did you know you can do this anywhere, anytime? She took puzzle. She said, anywhere, anytime? I said, yes. She said she went to her school and she was the, what we call the towel girl. Right. You see these little girls handing to, okay, the quarterback got injured bad. They had him up on the gurney. She walked up to him and says, I believe in divine healing. I believe if I pray for you, you will be supernaturally healed. Would you like for me to pray for you? She said he grunted out a yes. She laid hands on him and prayed for him. He got healed. He got up in the next play. It was him out there playing. And not only one time, two times, another player got healed. Pray for that impartation. Look into the camera and pray for the impartation. I am now praying for God to move in a supernatural way. Those saints laid their hands on me and imparted supernatural anointings on me. And now I'm going, to, I'm going to do the same thing for you. I'm going to pray right now and ask God to come supernaturally upon you to receive supernatural gifts and you work in this same anointing that was at Azusa Street in Jesus' name right now. Now listen, there is somebody out there that is laying on a couch and you're very ill. Doctors say you're not going to live. You're a man. You're going to live. Start saying, I will live and not die. Start getting up and you will be healed. Do it by faith now in Jesus' name. It's time for that hundred year prophecy to be on planet Earth. Why not now? Why not you? What if today you could actually receive the same anointing that was upon William Seymour, the great revival pioneer and father of the Azusa Street Movement? What would happen if the people who experienced that powerful revival in the 1900s could lay their hands on you and empower you to walk in the supernatural? Get ready. It is possible. 
Call now and get Tommy Welchel's anointed book, Stories of the Miracles of Azusa Street and Beyond, and his powerful two-part audio CD set, Miracle Impartations. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9207. Tommy Welchel is known as the final link to the Azusa Street Revival. He lived among the youth of that great spiritual outpouring and recorded first-hand accounts of the miracles these children of Azusa Street have witnessed. People who have read Tommy Welchel's anointed book report that they have received supernatural healing as they read the many powerful supernatural testimonies of Azusa Street. Testify of receiving supernatural faith to believe God for the impossible. Share that they are beginning to release the anointing they have received to others. He did it at Azusa Street. Why can't he do it now? And I seen it back in the 50s when my mother would drag me to the healing evangelist. I seen things like that then. He's the same God. And he said it was going to be a revival like a, just like Azusa Street, only greater. So yes, I believe it. Through Tommy's powerful two-part audio CD set, Miracle Impartations, many have reported miraculous healings, supernatural phenomena, and impossible situations turned around by a wonder-working God by merely listening to Tommy sharing these stories from Azusa Street. In this two-part audio CD set, you will build your faith to believe God for the miraculous. Receive the miracle you need. Be used of God to bring His glory to others through miracles, healings, and signs and wonders. Now you can receive an impartation to experience that same supernatural outpouring from heaven that Tommy Welchel received as the children of the Azusa Street Revival imparted to him. Each of the saints from Azusa Street would lay hands on Tommy for impartations of special anointings. And all those anointings went into Tommy. And that's why I'm so excited on his special CDs. And as you read what actually happened, I believe that you are going to walk in those greater miracles. If he could use Tommy, if he could use these people at the Azusa Street Revival, he's going to use you. Don't miss out on getting Tommy Welchel's anointed book, Stories of the Miracles of Azusa Street and Beyond, and his powerful two-part audio CD set, Miracle Impartations. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9207. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9207 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. Just breathe in the rarefied air of heaven. I prophesy to you, you will, you will hear God's voice. You will, you will hear God's voice. You will be normal. Normal is defined by the Bible because my guest has been called by God to mentor you in hearing God's voice.